What's up guys, I'm Dimitri with Horror Canucks, and I say this on every case review that with any new case release, it is vital for it to be different and for it to follow market trends. So it's not simply pushed aside by already established solid competition. So EVGA is releasing their second case ever, the DG8 line. Let's see if it's any good. The Kraken X61 by NZXT offers fantastic cooling with a 280mm radiator with long slim tubing for easier installation and high pressure copper cold plate. You can also customize LED through the CAM software, so get Kraken. And so this is the DG87. It's top of their line with plenty of interesting goodies. And I love the complete change of direction compared to their first enclosure, the Hadron Air, which was tiny. Now there are many elements on this case that limit its target reach since the price is quite high, although it does range depending on the model. Plus the design and size may not appeal even to enthusiasts. The shape reminds me of a 90s television combined with a dresser because of that mirror portion at the bottom. I'm not against mirrors on cases, but it just feels so out of place. Perhaps a different shape uh, for that portion or maybe a tempered glass would save the visuals on this side. The good thing here is the totally new look to be different, but this armored looking frame makes the case gigantic and surprisingly not as comfortable to work in. Here I am next to it with a GPU for scale. Also, you guys are weird wanted to see a banana for scale. So anyway, this thing is very heavy and difficult to move around, keep that in mind. And the only design element that I appreciate are the continuous angular ventilation on the top, the front and the back that unify an otherwise, I'm sorry to say, but an ugly case. Part of the IO is at the top with power reset buttons, two USB 2.0 ports and a K button that I'll describe later. And the meat of the IO is located in the mirror portion with audio, couple of USB 3s, power reset, type C and HDMI, uh, which is awesome for Type-C accessories and VR applications for that HDMI. Plus, we have a built-in fan controller for this particular model for intake and exhaust locations that is digital with 5% speed increments adjustment and a temperature display in Celsius that is monitored by this probe that is plenty long and can be uh, moved around inside the case. Now, there's no way to turn off the display unless power is disconnected. And since we have three digits, and temperature always showing, we have a constant zero in the front, unless of course your case is on fire. And so then we have this K button that changes your Windows power options. So it's not like a custom software with which you tweak CPU and GPU frequency. It's just a simple shortcut to change from you know, your balance performance or uh, power savings. And then we have this EVGA DG tuner, which is a software fan control. If you don't want to touch those buttons on the case. Uh, so here you can select which power settings uh, K boost enables. And so moving on behind the front panel is a built-in removable dust filter with three 140 millimeter fans that are included, 360 and 420 millimeter radiators are supported here. Moving to the top, we have another 140 millimeter fan with again 360 and 420 uh, millimeter radiators supported. We could potentially have seen another fan spot at the back here since this space allows for it, but it doesn't. And this is also a good representation of the extra thickness of that back portion. The top panel does not have a dust filter, which is unfortunate given the large ventilation mesh and all the dust will just percolate through. The side panel is toolless, opens with a button press just to 90 degrees. So it is highly recommended to remove the panel during assembly. And I like this approach, although it could be refined as the mechanism is extremely stiff. So I needed to use both my hands uh, when I was removing it and the side panel dropped on my foot. Then we have a glossy cover that is removable with a thumb screw. It's supposed to cover up this right portion where you'll have all the cables, uh, but the glossy plastic looks terrible, doesn't fit with the material choices of this case. I love the rear side panel though, it's easily accessible and design wise, it does not feel out of place finally. Opening the back compartment, here we find two more 140mm fans that are pre-wired and have fan grills to prevent any cable death. And there's also that middle divider for airflow channeling. The HDMI pass-through cable is found here with large openings uh, for the interior. So you could guide exhaust uh, with those two fans and you could set up something with water cooling through these cutouts. But given the nature of how that compartment opens, it perhaps 
best for fans only. Also, since this compartment is totally enclosed, all the cables would have to pass through this large side grommet. It's quite inconvenient for connecting peripherals and just guiding GPU cables, but the biggest drawback for me is case orientation because of it, since the side must either face the wall or stay at an angle to hide this cable exit. Now, the case is large enough already, so having it stand this way against the wall may further limit the target audience. There is one more panel behind the power supply with a small dust filter and I really like what they've done with the rear of the case for storage where you can install 8 hard drives or 12 SSDs with removable dual drive cages uh, side by side and SSD caddies placed in the corners with the midsection occupied by 3 more caddies. The drive cage utilizes a locking mechanism that works uh, great, it's toolless. Plus, the metal caddies are very well designed with proper mounting locations, so SATA connections align between SSD and HDD, and both drives can be installed facing the interior of the case, which may be easier for cable routing. Now, I wish there was an easy way to remove that entire bottom portion of the plastic that would help reaching those bottom drives if they're facing here, and because of that extensive I.O., there are so many cables that are all already pre-routed and have black sleeving, which is so appreciated. Uh, plus, we have these cable rings that are built in to clean everything up at the back. And so after completing the assembly, the system looks okay. EATX motherboards would look better, filling so much space, but there were a couple of hiccups along the way. First, the power supply is installed too far back in the basement, so my 24-pin cable did not have enough reach unless it was routed from the front, like so. Now, I did eventually uh, connect the 24-pin with uncomfortable tension on the cable, but as the saying goes, out of sight, out of mind. So this uh, slidey cover is awesome to hide this section. Then I just had to get rid of that glossy plastic piece that is illuminated by the way with the white interior LED. I'm just not feeling that color plus EVGA branding and what it's meant to really hide is the reservoir bracket which has 70 millimeters of clearance until the frame. It is removable if you're not planning on using it but if I was water cooling I would definitely want to show off my tube and you know ditch that glossy plastic. For the top we have 65 millimeters of height clearance for top radio but nothing underneath the ATX board for discrete cable routing. I would appreciate a few more cable openings here. Speaking of cables, absolutely no issues with space at the rear. Even if you were to populate all the storage spots, the panel closes just fine and we can move on onto the conclusion. And so the DG87 has been sort of a disappointment despite its uniqueness. I think the major drawback for me would be the size and the general appearance of the case. The mirror portion, the glossy pieces on the inside just feel out of place. Now I can appreciate EVGA's direction to be totally different with modern inclusion like Type-C, HDMI pass-through and a really cool fan controller auto execution again in the design department could be better. The biggest surprise for me during assembly was how cramped the case felt, despite it being so large. Uh, especially if you're trying to access the bottom front fans, it's super uncomfortable because you can not remove that bottom side portion of the plastic. And also for a case of this size, everybody will be complaining of it not having any five and a quarter inch space uh, slots because you can use that for fan controllers, reservoirs, etc. And for you know the basement having so much space, so much extra space, I feel like it wasn't utilized properly. You could easily fit a five and a quarter inch drive base somewhere in here without compromising on any of the hardware compatibility. And so what are your thoughts on the DG87, EVGA's second case? Are you happy with it? Let us know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next video.